revelation of Jesus, revelation of Jesus, fill me up, come fill me up, with revelation of Jesus, with revelation of Jesus, come fill me There's nothing I can do to earn your affection. Nothing I can do to make you turn away. For all my righteous deeds are as filthy rags before you. There's nothing I can earn. Nothing I can do to earn your affection. Nothing I can do better, do right, do more. Nothing I can do to add to your gospel of grace and truth. price you paid, though death was mine, you took my place. I won't forget the sacrifice, for to this love I owe my life, and I won't forget price you paid, though death was mine, you took my place, and I won't forget the sacrifice for to this love I owe my life. Shit. 
you pay though death was mine you took my place and I won't forget this sacrifice for to this love I owe my life Jesus Sorry. 
To deserve this kind of love This kind of I'm not afraid I'm not afraid of you coming and exposing my heart oh I'm not afraid of the exposing of my It just means that I get more revelation of you, greater depths of your love, greater depths of your forgiveness. 
Yeah. 
straight to my spear spirit of revelation spirit of revelation speak to my spirit come speak to my spirit
and search me out. I invite you now. Come and search me out. Come and search me search me out come and search me seen the light of day come and search me
Father, we're not here tonight to get anything for ourselves. God, we're not here to earn anything. We're here to give you our worship, to offer up our praises, because you're deserving, Lord. God, whatever it is that we're going through right now, Lord, you're bigger than it. And you're, you will not, you will get the praises you deserve, God. And so, God, I just pray that you would lead us, God, as we intercede on behalf of this nation as we go through Isaiah, that we would be able to lift up prayers, Lord, that begin to shift the atmosphere here in this land, God. Yeah, we just pray this in your name. Amen. Yeah, tonight, we're going to be having an inter intercessory watch through um, the Word. Um, so I want to encourage you to open your Bibles with us as we intercede for Korea through Isaiah 53, verses 2 through 12. We know that the word of God is powerful and effective, and we believe that as we pray through it, that we're really changing um, the climate here, not just in this vicinity, not just in this building, but in this entire nation. So I encourage you again to open to Isaiah 53, verses 2 through 12. And engage with this passage, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you and coming into agreement as we pray together. So Isaiah 53, verse 2. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. As one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and he, we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Jesus, we here in Korea are among those who count you despised, who counted you despised. We see the life that you led and we don't see the life of fame or glamor that we desire. We don't see the things that we want for ourselves. We see a man who is crushed by the world and let down by his closest friends. We see a man who people were following one second and then turning on the next. If we had met you in per person, we sh would have definitely taken pity on you. We would have ca called you cursed. We would have said, oh man, that's tough luck. And yet you call us to take up our crosses and follow you. We would easily follow you into victory into battle, into, you know, conquering the world. But are we willing, are we ready to follow you into the sacrifice that you made? The same sacrifice that you're calling us to make, God. God, the world around us, the flesh inside of us, doesn't wanna have anything to do with that. It's offensive to our pride and to our self-centeredness, God. And yet you call us to follow you. And God, we just pray for this nation that we would begin to see not just this man, not just what you went through, but here on this earth, but in the spirit, what you accomplished that we would begin to see the true beauty of Jesus Christ. The man who loved beyond any, any, any of us could have loved. The man who 
chose willingly to bless the world, even when it despised him. May we begin to catch a revelation, a revelation we haven't seen before tonight, God, of who you are and what you did, Lord. The beauty of your name, the beauty of your form, God, the beauty of your life, Jesus. God, come meet us. Come reveal yourself to us, Lord. Look with our eyes, God. That we will look upon you. But God, we ask for you to bring revelation of the beauty of Christ yes. into the land into our midst show us what we haven't seen before that we may see your beauty we may see your glory give us eyes to see spiritual eyes to see open our eyes that we may see your beauty we don't want to be blind anymore God glory. open our eyes open our eyes that we may see your beauty we may see your glory we don't want to turn away. We don't want to turn away from the brokenness. you anymore. Come and change this land with revelation of you. We want to long for you, Jesus. Give us eyes in the spirit. Give us eyes in the spirit. Give us eyes in the spirit. To see this man most beautiful. Give us eyes in the spirit. Give us eyes in the spirit. See this man most beautiful. Yes. Give us eyes in the spirit. Give us eyes. Give us eyes in the spirit to see this man most beautiful. Let us see your beauty. see your beauty that you may receive the worship to your name that you may receive the worship to your name that you may receive 
salvation that says yes to you, not despising what you've given us. We will say yes to you. We won't refuse you, God. We will say yes to you. We won't reject you, God. We will be a nation that says yes to you. Yes. We will be a nation that says yes to you. Take us in, take us deeper, further up, further in. Verse 5, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. What kind of grace is this God? A grace that isn't just sweeping something under the rug, sweeping our iniquity, our sins under a rug, but it's a grace that's fully aware of everything that has been done, that we are doing and that we will do. It's a grace that counts all of that and doesn't forget the necessary punishment. It doesn't for forgo justice. It's a great grace that was purchased at an expensive price, a price that would cost you your very life, a life that if you had lived on, would have lived to a ripe old age, that could have been more effective in transforming this world than any of us could have. And yet, you knew that the truth was the most effective thing you could do was die, was to go up on that cross and take the punishment we deserved, to offer up your life. And you did so without complaining, without a murmur of discontent. It was difficult for you, but you did not grumble. And us in our limited knowledge only see a little bit ahead of ourselves and complain so much. But you knowing full well what you were about to do, knowing full well what was about to be done to you, you still chose to go through with it. You knew full, full well the pain of being whipped and beaten, of having a crown of thorns jammed on your head. You knew full well 
that your disciples, your closest confident, confidants would reject you and turn away and disown you. This is the price that you pay. A price that's unfli- uh, 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 and you did so unflinchingly because you knew you knew that this is a price that we could not have paid ourselves that we could never have achieved on our own in our own strength this would have been impossible and so you did it you went to the cross you died for us and yet we still turned away God we don't want to be turning away from it anymore we want to look straight at the cross know it fully to understand it fully to be able to see you in it and be captured by that man Jesus to be captured by the sacrifice you pay yes Lord overlook anything. You didn't let anything go. It's a grace that doesn't forget justice. You bore the full punishment for our sins. It's a grace that doesn't forget wrath. Oh, it's a grace that doesn't forget justice. How we can be forgiven. And it's a grace that doesn't forget right. This is how we can live free. Oh, a grace that doesn't forget justice. A grace that doesn't forget right. We no longer deserve it. What was impossible? Was made possible with God. What was impossible with them was made possible with God. What was impossible with them was made possible with God. What was impossible with them was impossible for us. Possible with God. What is possible what in you, Jesus? Impossible with men was made. With God, what was impossible with men was made possible with God. What was impossible with men was made possible with God. What was 
Thank you, Jesus. So grace that doesn't forget justice. Yes, Lord. So grace that doesn't forget wrath. Thank you, Jesus. It's a grace that doesn't forget justice. You took the punishment so we don't have to be afraid anymore. It's a grace that doesn't forget Chastisement that brought us peace. Yes, that brought us life and healing. Yes, Upon you was chastisement that brought us peace. That brought us life and healing. Upon you was the Chastisement that brought us peace. We can have peace because of you. And life because and of the cross. Healing. Upon you was the chastisement that brought us peace. It's because of you that we can be healed. Verse 8, by oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression, transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. Jesus, you took the death we deserved. And not just the death we deserve, but everything. The rejection, the pain, the suffering, the illness, the chaos, the worry. No matter what we've done, no matter what we've experienced, we've, we've never experienced what you experienced on that cross. When the Father turned his back on you and rejected you and you cried out to him, asking why have you forsaken me? We can't fathom what that was like for you. You say that you pour out your rain on both the righteous and the wicked. No matter what, we've always been recipients of your blessing. The simple gift of life is evidence that every single person in this nation, 
on this earth is blessed by you. It's proof that you haven't turned your back on us. And so God, even in those moments where we feel so distant from you, may we remember that you are with us. God, that not only do you know how we feel, not only do you, have you experienced what we've experienced to a much greater degree, but Lord, you, you went through this so that we would never have to experience what you experienced, God. And so Lord, may we count ourselves blessed. May we in this nation begin to thank you for even the things that we don't have, God. But may we thank you for the things that we do have, the little things, God, the big things. May we never consider ourselves forsaken by you. But Lord, open our eyes to see that we are truly with you at all times, God. And that it's in your presence that we can find peace and joy because of what you did on the cross. God, that it's in your presence that we can find ourselves free from worry. Because you have not forsaken us. May the fear never enter into our mind that you've forsaken us. The truth is you have not, God. Because of what you've done. And so Lord, we thank you. And we count ourselves blessed before you. forsaken us, Lord. Us for us you haven't left us, Lord. You're with us, God. Oh, You're for us, Lord. Your favor is on us, Jesus. Emmanuel. We're blessed by you. The breath we breathe is a gift. The life we have is a gift. Every person, every loved one is a gift from you.
pleasure is in you, Jesus. We are blessed beyond measure. Our joy is in you, Jesus. We have eternal access to the Father. Yeah. To the Father. You won't reject us. Yeah. You won't turn us away. You won't turn away. You won't reject us. You won't turn us away. We can come before you, you won't freely. Reject us. You won't turn us away. Fully confident in you. You won't reject us. And you won't turn us away. You won't turn us away, you won't reject us, and you won't turn us away. May we always be found in you and in your presence. Eternal access to the Father of light, to the Father of lights, eternal access, eternal to the Father of love. We want to use that access. To the Father of lies. And you won't reject us. You won't turn us away. You won't reject us. Yeah. You won't turn us away. As Jesus did what no man could. So that you won't reject us, and you won't turn us away, you won't reject us, you won't turn us away, you won't reject us, you won't turn us away, though we follow you into your pain. follow you to the separation from the Father. Mm. Yeah. The separation from the Father. We'll always be with you. This is our hope, our delight, our victory, your presence, your nearness. This is our hope. was bought with a precious price. It was bought with a precious price. You're changing our perspective, God. It was bought with a precious price. Renew our vision. It was bought with a precious price. Open our eyes. Let us see it. down your life it's incomprehensible mystery of all mysteries but you're opening our eyes to see You're making us more like you. Making us more like you. Yeah. Making us more like you. Yes. For what we behold, for what we behold. 
behold, what we behold, we become alive. So as we gaze upon the suffering and the beauty of our King, Make us like you. We find you. ourselves being made into the image of the sun. Make us we like you. We find ourselves being made into the image of the sun. We find ourselves being made into the image of the sun. We find ourselves being made into the image of the sun. like you, Jesus. At this time, we'll be transitioning into intercession um, through various prayer topics. So I ask that you once again, um, just stay engaged and come in agreement with uh, my prayers, but also afterwards that we would pray together on these issues and release our faith, release our prayers um, in regards to these topics. So first, we're going to be praying for South Korea, that we would find rest in Christ. God, we pray for this nation, this nation that <laughs> runs itself so weary for various reasons, for many reasons. But God, first and foremost, we pray that the lost in this nation would find you, that they would find salvation in you, and that they would find rest in you, God. You say that your burden is light. We pray that the men and women of Korea would experience that that they would experience the, the freedom and the lightness that comes from being your son, from being your child, from following Christ and coming to him with our burdens. God, we pray that salvation would begin to transform this nation, that this nation would no longer be one that is burnt out in trying to pursue so many things. Lord, that this nation would find its rest in you, God. We pray especially for all the believers, God, in this nation who already believe that you are the bearer of our burdens, but they don't experience it. For those men and women, I pray that they would begin to experience your presence in every situation, that they would see Christ and see what he's done and begin to live free begin to live free from their guilt and shame, begin to live free from trying to earn salvation, that they would begin to live free from all the things, all the weight of this world, God. And especially for those, in, for also for every single person who is doing the work of ministry, whether they're full-time ministers, part-time ministers, uh, you know, lay leaders, volunteers, wherever they may be, 
May they not serve out of a place that is at the expense of their personal relationship with you, God. We pray that we would not think of ourselves so highly that, that, that we would be the ones to do your work for us, God. But Lord, I pray that we would also take into consideration our need for your presence, our need for your rest, our need to turn to you, God, and that even if it comes at the expense of what looks like um, taking a break from ministry or simply taking, you know, a day off, whatever it may be, Lord, I pray that um, every single believer that is doing your work of ministry, God, that they would find rest in the midst of it. Yes, Lord, let's pray. Next, we're going to be praying for rest in the workplace. This is a nation where so many people work overtime. So many people say after hours, work six, seven days a week. So many people work to try to make more money or grow their influence or do these things. But we want to, we don't want to see these men and women going without rest. And so we want to silence, Lord, the voices that say more time in the office equals more productivity. It's not simply a matter of spending more time on something that's going to make it more valuable or more um, higher quality. God, but Lord, you say that if it's not you who's building it, 
they were working in vain. And so God, we pray that employees around the world, a nation would find healthy and effective ways to, to rest and to find true rest in you. But yeah, ultimately that they would have more space in their lives to rest their spirits, not just their minds, not just their bodies, not just to relax from work, but truly to find rest from the things that, that are weighing them down, the things that are distracting them, that are making them restless. And God, we pray that as the culture of rest increases, as more and more people are valuing rest and putting an emphasis on spending time at home and spending time with family, that productivity would begin to rise, God, that we begin to see quality increasing and that we would also be able to directly correlate this increase to the rest that has also increased among the employees of this nation. So God, we just pray that you would begin to do this, that you would begin to shape the culture into one that is healthier, into one that is better, not just for the people as individuals, but even better for their companies and even better for the bottom line, God, that there would be a rest that is found and a blessing that is found as this culture changes, God. So let's pray. Next, we're going to be praying for rest from worry and comparison. There's a lot of voices that are speaking to the people of this country, filling them with fear, fear of failure, fear of losing their jobs, fear of never finding a job, fear of failing their 
exams, fear of getting into a bad school, fear of losing a relationship or losing a loved one. So many reasons to worry and be afraid and so many reasons more to compare with all the drive of wealth and beauty and standards that no one can meet. All of these things sap the energy of the, this people, of the Korean people. And God, we want to war against them, against these voices. We command these voices to be silent, God, in your name, Jesus. That these voices would no longer be yelling in the ear, ears of people young and old alike, starting from even the children of this nation. That these spirits, that these voices would have no power in the lives of the Korean people. God, we declare that every person is fearfully and wonderfully made. That every person is worthy of respect and honor. Every person is worthy of love, is worthy of being provided for, of being taken care of. God, we declare that over every single person in this nation. And we pray, God, that there would be a shift, that we would no longer devote our time and energy and money to trying to satisfy these voices, to trying to fill these voices. But God, that we would instead use our time, energy, and money to bless those around us. That we would begin to see that as we bless these men and women around us, that as love overflows in this nation, that there would no longer be a need to worry or compare. That there would no longer be a need because we are already so loved. Because we're already so provided for and so covered, God. And so Lord, we thank you that this is on your heart, God. And we come in agreement with what you're already doing and what you want to do in this nation, God. And so, Lord, we come against these voices together as we pray right now, God. Finally, we're going to pray specifically for rest for parents and for educators. Now, if you're a parent or an educator, I'm sure you know that having children can be tough at times. It can be difficult. It can be draining. It causes you to sacrifice a lot of things. 
but it says in scripture that children are a blessing and God we want to believe that we want to take you seriously and so God we pray that for parents and educators that they would take joy that they would find joy in taking care of their children in teaching them in raising them in providing for them that they would not see these children as a drain on their energy or finances or resources that they would not see children as you know these voices that should just be quiet and get out of their faces God but Lord that they would truly find a joy even in the most inane annoying things God but that there would be a joy in the midst of the every situation because they know that these children are a blessing God we disallow any person from blaming children for their lack of rest Lord that is not the reason they are tired that is not the reason they are exhausted but Lord instead I pray that you would help these parents and educators again to find rest in you to lay their burdens before you that they would trust in you to raise these children that they would trust in you to educate these children even because God no matter how good of parents or teachers we are we can't do this alone we're not going to be very good but Lord we, may they trust in you and be able to rest in knowing and letting go and trusting that you are the one who is leading these children who is raising these children and in that may they have excitement seeing where these children go that they would have excitement as they expect new children as they raise their young ones God that there would be an excitement for what is to come for the blessing that these children are not just going to be to their parents or the, to the educators themselves but Lord that they would be excited for the way that these children will impact every single person that they come into contact with that the way that these children would impact the world around them God and so Lord I pray that you would transform the way that parents and, ch and educators view children and students and that they would be able to find rest from their weariness and be able to count their these children as blessings God yeah let's pray
Father God, we thank you for what you've done tonight. We thank you for the way that you've shown your presence here, the way that you've changed our minds about who you are. And God, we just, again, release faith for the transformation of this nation. Release faith for the transformation from exhaustion to rest, God. From hopelessness to faith, God. For the transformation of being turned away and shunning you to being fully enamored by you, God. And so, Lord, we thank you for what you've done tonight. God, and we continue to release our faith for what you're going to do moving forward, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you all for joining us this Thursday evening. Uh, we hope that as we prayed for this nation um, and prayed through the scriptures that uh, God really revealed himself to you, that, uh, that you're able to walk away with fresh revelation of who Jesus is and greater heart for this nation as well. Um, we will continue uh, next week. We have our Wednesday morning watch at 9.30 and again our Thursday evening watch at 8. And as it will be a new month, we will be going through new scriptures uh, at both of our watches. Uh, so please look forward to that. Uh, we hope you'll join us again.